Broadcasting live from a shack on a hill on the Mossy Creek Bottoms of King Creek, Arkansas. This is Lighting the Void live on the Fringe FM. It is October the 25th on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. And uh, the call-in number tonight is 501 777 Tonight we're going to be talking about the occult magic, planetary magic, the great work, the higher self, with the one and only Rufus Opus. A man that has been on, uh, he's been on the broadcast before, and it's been a minute since we've had him on the show, and I used his book quite a bit, the Planetary Magic book. I thought it was an excellent book, and I had a great experience. I never got to share with him uh, using that book. I want to be able to share it with him and uh, talk about his other book as well. So that's coming up. We're trying to get him in here into the broadcast, but we're inching closer and closer to the Halloween time. So you know what that means. Uh, Halloween night, you need to be listening to the man, Alex Exum. Exum always has pretty awesome Halloween shows. And um, if you want to be a part of it, I'm sure you can go to alexexum.com. And he'll have a ton of links there. I should have more links and be helped. Prom- I've had so much crazy stuff going on in my life that I haven't even had time to help him promote his Halloween show. And um, so, uh, let's see here. Is it not working? Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure Rufus can get in. And and then it, it got, got me thinking about cycles and astrological energy, which is another thing I'd, I do kind of want to talk to Rufus about. Because this time of year, we get into this kind of dark Scorpio thing. And usually uh, it's a good time to work out like things that are going on with you personally. Like if you really want to do the work on yourself, this is what I was talking about Monday night. You can't be afraid of your demons. You got to deal with them. You can't push them down. I had some sound clips I wanted to play uh, about this too, but I couldn't, figure out how to do it and i almost like i lost track of time too because i'm back in arkansas momentarily so i I thought uh i thought it was earlier than it was this like the second time this has happened to me but uh the thing is is uh every time about this every well every time i get around this time of year especially for me there's always something i gotta work out some kind of death thing i gotta go through And that's fine. Like, if you want to put up with me and do that with me and listen to the show, you're going to have to put up with it. That's just me. I'm not convenient. Sorry. (laughs) But 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 it's cool to kind of get because each year it's like a new demon or a new thing that I got to work on. But here's the thing, man. The clips that I was going to play both come from uh, Cloud Atlas and that movie, uh, what's the name of that movie? I can't, I can't even think of it. The Lord of the Rings, where you have that mirror dude, you know, that person that's like uh, messing with you all the time, that voice that, oh, they're going to hurt you. They're going to do this to you. They're going to. And then when you start thinking that stuff, you'll, you can actually just think that stuff and you'll be surprised how many, um, how much it gets mirrored in the world, whether it's through people or, stuff or whatever oh yeah this is gonna happen and and it's this kind of weird psychic attack that happens to you that this i don't want to call it demonic but it's more fun to call it demonic isn't it energy that pretends to be your best buddy and it's here to help you and protect you and keep you safe from all the things out there that are gonna hurt you don't be opening up your heart to nobody blah 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 and it's 
uh, the Halloween time of year is actually a good time to deal with that. Things that have died and things that need to die. Um, so let me make sure I'm going to, uh, play just a quick commercial here. I got to make sure that we're all set up and ready to go because I'm excited about the show tonight. Like I love this time of year. Actually, Halloween is one of my favorite. I guess it's like one of my favorite holidays. I love the moon. I love the moonlight. I love the nighttime. I love Halloween. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love sunrises and sunsets and all this, but there's nothing better to me than a moonlit sky. Nothing. A moonlit starlit sky, which is uh, actually kind of synchronistic because the one experience I had with Rufus Opus is not one, but a pretty heavy experience I had with one of his books has a lot to do with the moon. I'm what I'm really hoping for. What I would love to see. This is this is going to sound really woo. But if the world was actually like a mirror to what is going on inside of us. I mean, I believe that. Like if whatever you're seeing in your life personally is a direct reflection of what's going on inside of you. You can't blame people. It's just, it just is. But at some point, I'm hoping that we all realize this. Like, we just wake up to it one day and we're just like, oh, you know. I've, I realize that I'm, we're creating all this. Like that show we did about the, the Matrix energy, right? And then you realize in an epic fashion that, oh, I, I can create pretty much the life that I want or whatever. But it's not always going to be like some kind of easy journey for me. I'm not always going to have um, the easy road. Because that's what I think a lot of people think when they get involved with magic is abracadabra. My life is better. Um, I'm going to, you know, put some sigils out there, do some rituals, and I'm really going to change my life. But it doesn't keep you from like doing the work. You still have to work. Matter of fact, from my experience, and I will be talking about this with Rufus after the break, I got a ton of questions for him. But from my personal experience, all it really does is it enhances the work, like shoves it in your face a little bit more. Where you used to could ignore it, now you can't. That's been my experience uh, from, from it. And I'm kind of grateful for it. I'm grateful for a lot of the, the magic work that I've done, elementally, planetarily, I'm grateful for it all, even though sometimes things may happen in your life, you're like, why? Why? Is, am I cursed? Have you ever heard that from people? Am I cursed? Is this some kind of sick joke from the universe or whatever? But it's not. The, the moment you realize the type of freedom that you can have, this is what I love about uh, the occult in magic, period is it it represents a freedom that you actually desire deep down you des- you truly like i think you truly do desire to be your higher self you want to be this thing that you're afraid of being well what will they say well what will they think of me or what if i don't live my life the way the rest of the world wants or maybe consciousness isn't what everybody thinks it is but you get that freedom to grow and it becomes isolating for a moment. But there's no, I, I can tell you this for sure, there's no better freedom than the ability to to be not just isolated. It doesn't matter if you're isolated, you're with people, you're in the world, you're asleep. You start to come into a self of yours that nothing can contain anymore. They can't stop it. These little rats, man, these little demons or whatever we whatever we call them are really there to kind of, at least in, in, from my point of view, to show us like, man, I never knew I had this part of me. So I, can, I don't want to get into the story about what happened with the Planetary Magic book until Rufus gets on here, but it was pretty damn profound, right? It was something that I thought... Uh, that, that, that didn't happen. That wasn't real. But it was one of the only times in my life, magically, where I had someone 
witness it. This is not something that you that happens in magic because you're usually doing it by yourself, unless you're doing like a ritual with your partner or something. You're usually kind of doing your own work. But this was one of those times where someone just happened to walk outside as I was pouring out some liquid into the ground. Let's just say that. And something happened when I did that. And they saw it and they were like, oh, my God, what was that? And so I, I actually got to get some verification because that happens all the time. Like when you do this stuff, things will happen. It'll be a big fat synchronicity and your mind will go, wait, was that just, was that? Nah, that didn't really happen. That's all in my head. But then I had someone verify it for me. I'm just kind of teasing this story as we go up here. Big thing coming up to Halloween. Make sure you guys do check out uh, Alex Exum's Halloween show. It's fantastic. The guy goes all out. He hires actors. He does the writing. It's all it's, it's radio style. It's all audio style. It's amazing to listen to. Well, let's see. We got breaking news here. What's going on? Massive shooting in Maryland. I don't know what's going on. And are you saying Maryland, Alex? Jesus, man, sixteen people dead, sixty people shot. Something's going down right now. We got to do a show, but uh, we'll keep you posted as it as we go along here with Rufus. It would happen in this time of the the year, <clears throat> right? For something like that to happen, but God, I hope these people are okay. Um. Anyways, so I'm going to jump into the break a little early. We're going to get Rufus on. We're going to talk about his books, about his work. It's been a minute since he's been on the show. I can't wait to tell him the story that happened to me as I was doing the planetary magic stuff in his book. And uh, it'll be an interesting show. Make sure you download the app. If you want to call in later, it's 501-777-5631. Stick with us. Don't go anywhere. I, th- I think this is just going down, but there's people getting shot in Maine in multiple locations. I think Rufus actually helped me look it up online right now. So there, whatever is going down out there is not a good thing. So please send your thoughts and your prayers and any good vibes and healing vibes out to the people out there. And I guess there's multiple. It's all over. the. You, no one's going to know the actual truth until this all settles down, but something's going on. So, um, Rufus Opus is here with us. It's been a minute since he's been on the show. And his motto is, life is hard, magic helps. And he writes books, teaches classes, and takes a lot, and talks a lot about occult practices. The goal is to empower and equip magicians so they can explore and build lives that reflect how awesome they can be in real life. And I love that, uh, I love that motto, Rufus, like, life is hard, magic helps. It definitely does, doesn't it? Right. I mean, I think that about sums it up. You know, I, I, I've, I've adopted that motto lately because it, it seems like um, like uh, people go to magic and they look to magic to like solve all their problems. And, and like occultism is going to solve everything, you know, and it, it, it helps a lot for sure, for sure. But you got to know what you want. And it's uh, <laughs> it, 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 it influences things. It, it adapts things and it assists you. But you need to have something to assist and something <laughs> you have to be there to be helped. You have to have a plan for it to work with. So so I've, I've tried to refocus things on just how magic helps. <laughs> That's good because because I literally did a, a pretty good operation not too long ago. It was really focused. And I think I understand what you're saying. Like if you. Let's say like your mind wants something, but your heart and soul kind of want something different and you're not in alignment with it. And then you ask for something. Doesn't that kind of screw stuff up sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, it's like it's like anything else in life. If you go for like a job that you don't really want, you're going to sabotage your work. Right. You know, so in the same way that, that like if you're if you're working at a place, you don't enjoy the job. And, you know, and you might not do as good of a job and you end up getting fired from it because you you weren't really happy and weren't really enjoying yourself. You know, the, 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 in the same way, if you're, not, if you're doing your magic that way and you're like, well, I, it's time for me to ask for Mars blessings. It's time for me to do my Jupiter blessings or or if you do like a Jupiter right to to get 
like lots of money, but you don't really feel like doing any work for it. You know, it, it's like you're, you you can do all the rituals you want and you can say what you want, but you still have to do the work to follow through on it. And if you don't really want the things that you want it, that you, that you do the magic for, you're not going to do the work to build it, you know? So, so yeah, I guess in a way you, you do still self-sabotage a lot. If you're not, if you're not, uh, uh, what's the word? coherent enough you know like if you're not internally cohesive enough with your with your true will or your your desires and your intentions and your if you're not really focused on things it's hard to hard to get anything done and it, it sounds like i mean it, that's true about everything <laughs> it turns out it's not it's not just an occult rule but but, but it yeah, helps to sure. have the uh it helps to have the energies behind you though for sure i mean oh oh yeah yeah somebody asked me the other day um <laughs> he was like you seem so wise. You're you're so wise, and you you know all this stuff. It's like you're over a hundred years old. How did you how did you get to be that way? And I I got to thinking about it, and I'm like, you know, I don't think I'm in, I don't think I'm wise at all. <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm, I'm a complete moron, and I'm just stumbling through life and doing the best I can with with what I have to work with. You know, um, yeah, and yeah. I. I I feel like that's just what we do. Right. You know, but, but like I was thinking about it and the fact is, is I do, I, I have a much better life than a lot of people and I, I'm really good at getting what I want and I get what I want all the time because I have been through all those initiations, you know, and I have, I don't, I kind of take it for granted that, that everybody could do what I do. And and the fact is, is no, you're right. You know, the energies do, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time doing a lot of work laying the foundation to get these energies aligned behind me to push, to push my ideas forward in the universe in ways that they carry, carry more weight than just my own personal activities. So, right. so yeah, I mean, all this stuff that we do, it does, it does add up, you know, that it's, it's so slow and it, it accumulates so slowly that it's really easy to lose sight of, you know? And, uh, I, it, it's, it's nice to be reminded once in a while that I do have, <laughs> I do have something to show for all the work I've been putting into it yeah. all this time. Yeah, man. Like you're, I'll tell you a story in a second, your book, your planetary magic book, I was doing a, you know, uh, moon, one of the moon rituals. And at the end of it, you know, doing, giving thanks and all that stuff. And, uh, but, uh, I'll tell you that in a minute, but I want to say this, like, do you, so I went on a, I went on a show and it was about, there was like 20 something dudes there. It was one of these, uh, it was like union of the unwanted and they had some big names there and they were talking about the occult and they like this hotep Jesus guy asked me, he's like, well, if you, if you think magic and the occult is so good or whatever, how come you're not a millionaire? It's like, how come you're not driving in Lambos and stuff like that? And it, I didn't, um, at first I wanted to laugh, but I was like, I, he's serious, right? Like he thinks that right. my whole life is, is my soul needs that stuff for some right. reason. My soul doesn't need that stuff. If it did, I would have it. That's what I was thinking to myself, you know, but I didn't really know how to answer him. Do you, all right. So I get that, that question a lot, you know, um, and I, I make, I make bank dude. <laughs> I, I, I have a day job where I make a ton of money as a, um, Microsoft power apps developer, nice. right? It it's, uh, I have no college degree. I've gotten, I've got over 20 years experience now, but I've gotten that experience just by fucking doing magic and pushing myself forward and grinding it out and doing the work, you know, but mostly by being lucky and by showing up and, and being curious and interested in everything that I was doing, you know, but it's a hundred percent about the magic, you know, <laughs> it's, it's the magic really does. Uh, it gets, it, it got me my first opportunity. And as a, a tech writer, and when I was first starting out, um, I did a ritual to get a better job. And I wanted to be a writer. I knew I wanted to be a writer. I went to college to be a writer. I dropped out of college and um, decided to go just be a bum and instead. And then like, you know, years later, I was married and having kids and I needed to get my, my poop in a group. So I decided I was going to I was going to do a ritual to get a better job. So I, I did a ritual and I wanted to be a writer and I didn't really know what to do. So I went to manpower.com and I found a description. I knew I wanted to do computer work and I wanted to do writing. So I'm like, show me a computer writing job. And uh, the position tech writer came up. I had no idea that it even existed. And 
I tried to apply for this job because it sounded it sounded like something I could do, you know, and the the link didn't work. <laughs> this was like in uh, 2002, maybe, you know, and I went and this was manpower.com. Right. So I went to manpower.com. So I tried to, to, to get this link to work. It wouldn't open the thing to let me apply. So I called the local manpower company and I was like, hey, look, I'm trying to apply for this job. I, the link doesn't work. And the guy says, that's fine, whatever. Just send me your resume and and we'll get it in. Turns out I was the only person that applied for that job <laughs> because the link was broken. It was just a coincidence. It was a coincidence, right? right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so that coincidence worked in, out in my favor. And because I got that job as a tech writer, it was for a two-week position. And the guy was going to Sweden uh, for two weeks and he just wanted to keep this seat warm. He wanted somebody who didn't have any experience. So he wasn't threatened. He didn't want to come back and find out that I had gotten his job while he was gone. So he, he hired me because I didn't have any of the experience I needed, but I was smart enough to know that a tech writer was a thing and I could use Microsoft Word. So I, I he was fine with it. And I, I filled in for him while he was gone. And I did, I did such a good job uh, impressing my boss and his boss that they found a job for me there, you know, and I really, I just kissed ass and I did everything they asked me to do. And I did it very fast and I did it super efficiently and I did my absolute best. And for those two weeks, I felt like I was on trial and I had to bring it every single day. And I did, I brought it every single day and I knocked it out of the park and I, I, I just wailed away on everybody else. I made them look so bad at what they were doing, you know, and it's just, it, it, it's eagerness, it's intensity, but it's magic. You know, it's magic helps a lot. It opens the doors and it, it provides you with those opportunities. And it's literally, it, it's how you do all that stuff, you know, but it, it, it paves the way for everything. You know, it, it, the reason I say magic helps is because it helps with every aspect of your life, you know, love, money, um, I mean, I'm sure there's more besides sex and money in the world that is important to people, but, <laughs> but so. I'm a Taurus. <laughs> right. So, I mean, once I've got those things, I'm good, you know? <clears throat> so. Well, that's a big motivation for all of us. If people don't like, like we all want that, right? That's another thing too, is, is I wanted to talk to you about, uh, is the higher self and being real, like you got to be real with yourself, but dude, I was doing I want to tell you about what happened. So I was using your book. And I don't, I'm not sure, like, I don't get into that. Oh, never talk about your stuff. Cause it, whatever, man, like you wrote the book, mm -hmm. so it's not going to hurt to talk about it. So I was doing the moon operation. This was a while back. This was before I got, uh, you know, manifested a, a life to travel around as a podcaster mm -hmm. using your book, by the way. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I did the moon, this moon, the moon ritual and I went outside and I did the, the thank, you know, the thank you prayer that's in the book. And, the, you know, I poured the, I think I had wine at the time and I poured it out. It was cool because I like your book style. Cause I, you could pick music, you could change the moods to stuff if you needed to. Right. Right. Yeah. You need to make it, you need to make it your own. Right. In, in my opinion, yeah. the, you know, everything that we do with this, with this occult stuff, like they tell you the, the seals and the, and the names of the spirits and the time to, to go out and meet them, you know, and they tell you what, what herbs and spices go into their incenses. And, and they tell you all this stuff in these magical books, like the three books of occult philosophy, it's got all that information there for you. But when you get there, uh, and you start doing the magic, you know, you're the magician, right. you're, you're the flavor, you know, it, everything else is just the ingredients, you know, and it's like, you've got everything you need to make the recipe, but what's going to make it good and tasty. And what, what makes it you and, and yours is how you, how you manage the, the ingredients and what your relationship with the spirits are and, and what your experience and your background with the forces that you're going to be working with are, you know, it all comes together to, to make a, a thing that's going to be very unique and very personal and very um it's going to reflect what what you do what you what you want but but the degree of yourself that you put that you can put into it um the more that you can bring to it that's of you the more you're going to have a, a connection to your ritual and, right. and to the results so it, it's like it's important to leave those those things open to like like so like i would suggest like for for the moon it was um uh i think i went with wine because it was a uh, the woman I was with at the time, um, the, the moon was very feminine and, and we were very into feminine stuff that was all about wine and, yeah. and chocolates and, and stuff like that. So good it was stuff, like an man. incense. 
Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, you, you know, you just, you, you recommend, I, I recommended stuff within the, the constraints of what was traditionally acceptable, but, but like, I always wanted to make sure that people had as much leeway as possible to bring their own personality to the table too. Sure, man. And uh, <clears throat> so here's what happened as I'm outside, you know, my temples over here and I go outside, I pour it out. The, the, there's clouds in the sky. There's no moonlight. And I thought, oh man, you know, it's the moon. It's the moon ritual. I want to see the moon, right? But I do the prayer anyways. And I'll be damned, dude. I'm not playing. Like, as soon as I did it, as soon as it hit the ground, like, there a cloud opened up. I'm not <laughs> playing. It opened up in the sky, dude. And the moon shone, th- it, and it hit my yard. It wasn't all over the place. It was just a beam, dude, from the moon that hit just, my yard. Just like, right, right on where you. I was at. Just right. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, yeah. what is happening? And my son walked outside. Like, I try to keep him away from what I'm doing just, you know, because he was little at the time. But he saw me doing it, and he was standing there the whole time, and I didn't even know it, right? And my son said, what the heck? He goes, did you do that? And I was like, did I do what? (laughs) I said, no. I said, I I told him, I said, no, the moon's just coming out to say hi, you know? But at the time, I was like, that is crazy. Because usually if it lights up, it'll light up like the whole place if, you know, a hole opens up in the cloud. Mm -hmm. But this was like a where it just opened up where a beam, a, like a moon beam would come through just for a second, just so you could see the moon, a beam come through, hits my yard where I'm standing at. And then just like, mm-hmm. it's like, Hey, I see you, you know? Well, how long, how long have you been doing this kind of thing? Like how long have you been into, into occultism? Uh, since for about 10 years now. All right. Yeah. So, so I got, I, I'm curious when you, when you do this stuff and you get these, these cool effects like that, do you feel anything different like inside yourself while it's going on? There, yeah. Like I felt, I, I remember it specifically at that time. I, how did I feel at that time? Cause it was like a rush of emotion and confidence mm-hmm. at the same time. Like just yeah. pure like emotions, but also I felt more confident and safe than I've ever felt in my entire life. Emotionally. You know? Right. Right. But, but did you feel like you were doing anything? Like, I don't feel like in those moments when that weird shit or weird things are actually starting to manifest and materialize around me, like I'm, I'm just shocked. Like I'll yeah. stop a ritual and just be like staring at it. Like, like if a camera, like if a candle starts to flicker and like, like my, when my wife does ritual, her, her candles will flicker like three or four inches. It's not the like something small, sure. <laughs> you know, it's just not subtle. She's got, she has a lot of juice going and the energy flows and, and, and she has this huge, these big effects when she's doing ritual. And I'm just like, I, I always stop and stare and I'm like, Whoa, did you see that? You yeah, know? Yeah, like, right. and, like I'm, I'm like the worst person at a church, <laughs> you know? And it's, it's just like, it blows me away, you know, but like the idea that the, the magician is the one doing this stuff, you know, like your son came out and said, did you do that dad? And it's like, it would be great to say, yes, I did that. I, yeah, I called I, forth the right, moon spirits right. and they heard me and they've shown light of, of moonlight right here on my yard and <laughs> response to my will. But that's not how it works. No. You know, it's just, I happened to be doing, I was, I was observing the times and the, and the stations and the spirits and I was doing my part and I was asking for something I needed help with. And the universe was doing this over here. And it just, we overlapped in this moment. Moment and it was coincidental and it was beautiful. I didn't really feel like I did it, but I, I mean, but I, I feel connected when I do this. Right. Sure, yeah. You know, and, and, and that's the thing is like, like uh, uh, when you go for this materialization thing, like when you get into the secret and, and all that, that manifestation side of, of the, the spiritual market, if you will, you know, it, the idea that you're going to be able to materialize things um, it, it, it works really well if you're super emotional about things and if you're very clear about it, but it'll work really well sometimes and not other times. And you've got this ambivalence and this coincidental thing and, and it's sort of circumstantial and it, and you can't really, there's not like a switch that you can flip inside yourself that makes things manifest that, you know, this is what I do and this is going to happen afterwards. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's, 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 that I think that's, that's fascinating. You know, and that's where I ended up with the whole, uh, life is hard, but magic helps, you know, it helps. It doesn't, it's not there when you, when you want it for everything, it's there. Like if you do it, you do it, you hope for the best, but you go ahead and live out your life. And then you have these, this series of, 
of uh, beneficial coincidences that go your way, mm. you know? And, and I think more and more, like I'm trying to write new books and stuff and I read all this stuff and I have all these ideas and trying to figure out how to put it in words that reflect accurately what I'm experiencing. That's the hard part for me. Cause like, I can tell you, I, I did all this Jupiter magic and I got this great job and I make a lot of money, you know? Oh, getting back to the Lamborghini thing. The only reason I don't have a Lamborghini is because Lamborghinis are, are pieces of crap and they break. <laughs> They're not. Well, very I mean, good my cars. point to that was, is like <laughs> I, money's great and all, but that's not, <laughs> that's not my pro. That's not what my soul wants. I've, like my soul wants a certain things. Like if, if I had like, a, I'm a family guy, right? But I got to have mm-hmm. like the people first and I'll build a castle around them. I don't want to build one around myself. I already enjoy my life. So right. like, you wouldn't build a castle if yeah. you didn't have a kid to protect. Sure. Exactly. <laughs> like, I, like I don't need all that stuff, man. And right. I would may, live in a some people may in the like forest it, if I, <laughs> but I don't like some people need that stuff. Honestly, if some people were honest with themselves or like, I need it, you know, in order to help me with confidence with getting women. Okay. Well, whatever. Another guy may like it because, dude, they just like the experience of having money. It makes them feel safe or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's, the whole point they is like just, fast cars. Yeah. You know? Being like, free to be you, man. There's not a standard. Like, that's right. what I hate about this occult thing. They're like, oh, you're a magician. Um, you should be able to manifest abracadabra and have all the money in the world. It's like, well, could, yeah, I mean, I you could. can if you want. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is, is so if you did that, what would what would it look like in real life? You know, it, like you'd get an opportunity to start learning something that would eventually lead to you getting that much money. Right. You know, that's yep. that's how it works. It's natural. Like the stuff that we do, it seems supernatural, but it's not. It's natural. We're calling on the forces that that create natural life. You know, or and, you could and get it's in a car wreck and get an insurance claim. You, I mean, depending on, it, <laughs> depending yeah, on how exactly. You do well, it. I mean, my first, my first big windfall was uh, was my my house burned down. I did a ritual for four thousand five hundred dollars because my electricity bill was so high, <laughs> and they were going to shut off my electricity the day after Christmas. And I did this ritual for like forty five hundred dollars, and I got my first check for my for my settlement was for forty five hundred dollars. You know, and it's just like it was almost the exact dollar amount that I that I had to have was the first check I got. And I got that the check like the day that like the day they were going to turn off the electricity, my house caught on fire. Right. So I was in a, a, a place where I didn't have to worry about it. I was in a temporary house that night and I got a huge check for, that would have covered it. But I mean, my my family was going through all the trauma of having our house burned down. Yeah. You know, it was not worth it. Right. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. I could have I could have gotten a job. <laughs> And made forty five hundred dollars. It wouldn't have had to been like that, but you know, I mean, I didn't know that bill was coming. Otherwise, I would have done something different. But you know, th- that's the thing is, is you you can do magic and you can do magic and, and get you can it'll it'll find a way to manifest for you, but it'll look like a very natural series of events. Like my house caught on fire. It, if you look at all the things that it went into that, like I had a pile of crap next to my water heater. My water heater was an old water heater. It was there when I bought the house. I didn't know that it was missing a part. The part it was missing happened to be the thing that would protect it in case there was a flare out. The flare outs don't happen very often. It's a very rare occasion. And it just happened to have a flare out and the flare out happened to be in a unit where there wasn't a door and that door happened to not be there to protect it from going out to hit this pile of crap that I had next to my water heater, like an idiot, you know, like there's all these coincidences that went into play that just happened to work out. So I got this dollar amount that is exactly what I asked for, you know, right. and it happened in, in a very short period of time, but it was very traumatic and dangerous. But if I'd done that same ritual, like four months earlier, I could have found a, I, I might've manifested it in a way that I got a thousand dollars a month extra instead of, you know, $4,500 all at once, two weeks later, but my house burned down, you know, it's like, it's like things will come to you, but it has to have an avenue to materialize that looks natural, you know? So like getting, getting rituals to bless your job is a lot more effective than uh, doing a ritual to win the lottery. You know, you're going to make $4 million over four years, you know, investing in stuff and, and making all this stuff happen that way. You know, you're a lot more likely to do that than you are to win a lottery ticket overnight, you know, because you just the amount of emotions I think that it would take to to drive that kind of 
uh, I want to call it like a Copperfield effect, you know, like that kind of massive shift of reality overnight. You know, I mean, the amount of emotional energy that I think would have to go into let's that. Talk, let's talk no, about nobody's that, yeah. that happy. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. So emotions, right? This is mm-hmm. something that that I find fascinating. Like, I th- people are so nowadays are so afraid of their emotions, and I'm like, the, your emotions are literally your supercharger, especially magic. Yeah. You know, so if you're not in touch with your emotions or, you know, I don't know. So let me ask you it this way. Would an emotionally mature person be a better magician than a person that still has emotional issues if you were to use it as a tool? Uh, I think the person who would be the best magician would be someone who can turn on and off their emotions whenever they want to. And what I mean by that is not like pretend to feel a certain way, but actually feel like tap into that, their raw emotions to the point where they can actually generate that feeling and then direct that into their desired outcome. So like I I did a ritual once where I was trying to, I wanted someone to die (laughs) and I I conjured this demon to to murder this person. Right. And this, and well, I was, I was very angry and I was so angry. It worked. Right. So like the spirit manifests in front of me and like, like it, not like literally, but like, there was a darkness in the room, a darkness again, like there was a shadow against the darkness behind it. Like it was obviously there was something there it was dense. It dropped like 10 degrees. It got super cold. You know, the spirit was there and I heard it go, what do you want? You know? And I was like, Oh shit. You know? And, and, yeah, like, and in that moment, I realized <laughs> that this is going to work and this is going to kill that person. And I didn't want to kill them. You know, I was just mad. Yeah. So I was like, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm, I, I didn't mean for this to happen. Let's just, uh, never mind. Thank you for coming and <laughs> peace. So go forth in power. Never mind. You know, and I had a heart attack two weeks later. Oh, damn. Man. <laughs> yeah. That so energy like you had to go su- somewhere yeah. super emotional. Right. And I don't know if I, I'm, I'm not saying that, that this, this is exactly how it worked, but my theory is that I had all that emotions and I got this magical, uh, effect in that moment. And because I didn't, declare it to go into the target that I wanted it to. It just came back on myself. That's my theory. I don't know if that's really how it works or not, but it seems like it. Well, what's your you intuition know? about? I mean, your intuition is telling you that. that yeah. My intuition is, right? says that it's all that every, every occult, like I use that as an example because it was, it was a very extreme emotions, but you know, a real magician, a real effective magician is going to be able to, dial up that emotional stuff that they that is related to their desire and channel it into their desired outcome without it without it getting ahead of them and without them uh losing themselves in their emotions so like when you get really angry and you want to punch a wall you know if you've ever been angry enough to punch a wall you punch oh, the yeah. wall in that moment and you feel like an idiot right afterwards yeah, you, you know but there's still a like hole in the wall and your hand hurts you know and all that all that crap happened and it was all in this big emotional outburst and you don't really remember exactly deciding to do anything, but, but that was all there. And in that moment, the emotions got the better of you and you didn't get the desired outcome you wanted. Right. Right. But the flip side of that is, is the people who go to therapy and they learn to, um, when, when they get angry, they, they re- respond to it rationally. They, they plug that into something and they get to the point where they don't have that emotional outburst and they aren't punching the wall and they don't have a hole in it. But at the same time, what they've done is they've sublimated their anger and they've, they've, they've trained themselves to sublimate their anger. So like I, I went through all this rage therapy shit because I, I, have I had a terrible temper and I was very I was dangerous you know so I had to go through therapy and I had to get all that fixed and I came out of therapy I didn't have an anger issue anymore but I also didn't have I didn't care about anything anymore (laughs) you know I had learned to sublimate my desires that yeah and it's like you you can't so you being an emotionally mature person by American modern 2023 standards of psychiatric evaluations and all that crap. You know, I don't think that that person is going to be a very effective magician either. You know, I think, I think you have, they're trying to control their emotions all the time. Like, yeah. 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 Yeah, Like you said, and and that's exactly what you said is, is people are afraid of their emotions. That's the thing, man. You can like, so 
I I think emotions are a beautiful thing, but to me, emotions are the cups. You know, they're water. It's an element, mm-hmm. right? So that's the way I look at it. So when people make fun of their emotions or they look at them like a problem or whatever, I I look at magic as a whole process of like, I'm old, I'm too old school with this, man, and you can tell me I am if you want to. But I love the process of, you know, the moon, the sun, and the stars, right? The pentagram, the hexagram, and, the you know, the stars, the doing the elements the planets you know the transformative process of the Mm -hmm. internal thing with magic too like i think i think it's a special thing right because it increases your power even more and it increases your awareness and love and everything you know if you do it in that fashion yeah it's like it turns everything up to 11 you know it turns up your the volume of your emotions and it 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 gives you the the authority to control them at the same time you know It, it, it anything that you turn your attention to as a magician, you're going to be able to do better and you're going to be like, if it's controlling your emotions, you'll be better at controlling them. If you're writing a, a, a piece of music, you're going to write a better piece of music. If you're doing a, a podcast, you're going to do a better podcast, you know, and it's not, it, it's not, it's not going to be the best of the best of everybody every time, you know, but it's going to be better than the people who aren't doing that magic. And it's going to be better than you would have done if you hadn't done the magic, you know, it's it's going to be better and improved over what you're capable of without without bringing that force to bear, you know, and the more you, you do it, and the more you pump into what you're doing, the more effect it's going to have, you know, but like but like I, I did applied hermetics. Right. I, I had this site where I was going to do all this occult teaching stuff for, sure. you know, it was going to be great. But I, I got to the point where and I built the infrastructure and I bought the licenses and I built the site and I did all that stuff without building the content first, you know, and by the time I had it all built, the structure was all ready to go to receive the content. It cost so much that I had to work so hard. I didn't have time to build any content <laughs> and uh, it, it was it was so complicated that I couldn't just work on things in my spare time and get it out there and build a business organically. You know, I, I, I overthought it, I overengineered it and, and it didn't work. Right. Yeah. You know, but my magic was a success. <laughs> I immediately had like a ton of people interested in it. I had people sign up for it. I had a lot of, of, uh, of, of interest, you know, I just didn't, it didn't matter because I didn't have the content, you know, you have to be able to deliver on everything that you're trying to build, you know, and I, I mean, what you said about cups and being emotions, you know, the tarot deck is great. You know, it's got all four elements and, and the spirits of the arcana. And I think, I think more and more as I go through all this stuff, you know, it's important to integrate every part of your life. You have to have the emotions to charge your, your ritual, but you have to have your mind in control to know what you're doing with your emotions to charge your, your ritual. You have to have some planner aspect of yourself and, and engage to plan your life and figure out what you want and, and figure out how you're going to get to where you want to be. You know, you have to have a a dreamer part of yourself that has ambition, that has goals, you know, like for years and years, I I was told, you know, to sit down and shut up and be quiet. Sit still, Josh, sit still, Josh, you know? (laughs) So, I mean, I didn't move. I didn't move. I didn't, I wouldn't let myself get interested in anything because if I, if I saw something I wanted to do, I would go do it. You know, I got sad rising and boom, I'm out the door. If I want to, if I see something shiny over there, you know, and it's like that, that creative impulse, I had to get that back. I had to learn how to, how to let myself and engage with things that are interesting. And so the the thing about the great work and magic and, and the seven spheres and all this stuff is it's building you into a more powerful, more efficient, human being, but it has to do all of those things. It has to be your emotions, your actions, your, your mind, your spirit, your body, you know, it has to be all of those things. Like I, if I don't go for a walk, you know, at least three times a week for at least an hour for a walk, <laughs> you know, it, it, my, my body goes to shit. Yeah. The earth and I, is out of balance. Cause it's not. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so my emotions are, are crap after that. Because my, my, my emotions are based on my, my physical feelings. If I eat too much, I feel bad. Right. If I, if I don't walk, go for a walk three times a week, I don't have the endorphins as, as readily available, 
you know, like everything starts to turn to sludge and, and it's, it impacts my mind. It impacts my emotions it impacts my body. And then I don't feel like doing my magic, you know, that makes and sense. It's like, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, but if I do my magic, then, you know, if I do my, my Wednesday morning ritual with, with Raphael, the archangel or Hermes, the God of the crossroads, you know, I'm going to, I feel good about things. I'm going to go for a walk later in the, in the morning. Cause I want to go out and, and experience that connectivity to the flow of the energy of the mercurial forces that I tapped into, you know, and, and I'm going to be thinking about things. I'm going to be creative in my mind. I'm going to be looking for things. I'm going to be measuring and balancing things because I've got these mercurial forces going in my head. You know, I'm going to be looking at the the columns and rows and spreadsheets and, and I'm going to be analyzing things from this hoed mercurial intellectual side of things, the air element, you know, and, and that's going to drive the rest of me. But, but as soon as you start adding energy to any part of your body system and creating a flow that's heading towards something, you know, you got to, you got to make sure it's balanced and you got to keep it all going towards the same thing. But it, 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 it accumulates and it builds up momentum, you know? So like you was, do one part of your life and, and just let it slop over onto everything else. You know? I was going to ask you about that too, because I've, so as a, I can tell you my experience as a ceremonial magician, like I've stopped doing it. So I started doing it right. And things, like you said, things began to happen. Things would manifest, things would come along and help me along the way. And then mm-hmm. I got, it's almost like, okay, well, I, I got something that my heart deeply desired. And so I stopped. I became lazy with my magic, right? Mm-hmm. And then I stopped, and then the things started going to shit, right? And I, th- mm-hmm. and I thought, okay, what did I just do, right? So did I set, like, your my mind started playing tricks on me. I was like, great. So now do I have to do magic for the rest of my life? Like, I already opened these doors, so I can't right. go back. You know what I mean? Like, you understand what I'm saying? Or is yeah. it all in my head, you know? Well, it, it's like, does the world stop crank, turning if you stop cranking? You right. know? It, it, everything that we do, we're, we're, we're a superstitious species. You know, we think that we have a lot more control and influence over things than we do have. And then when we find out that we do have some influence and some greater control over things, it goes right to our heads and we feel like it's all of us. Like, like, like if I do a ritual to get a job and I get a job, then obviously I am the, I am the job God, you know, and therefore if I ever lose my job, then I have fallen and I have failed everything. And I, I will, you know, I will, I, maybe I'll just immediately get another job. But then if I try and I don't get another job, then I'm not the job God anymore. Right. But that's not how it works. You know, just because you do magic and you get a job doesn't make you once and for all forever more. You're you're that job getting person. It means you did magic one time and it worked great for you that time. But if you want something else, you have to do more magic and it's going to be different magic. And you have to do that stuff because it's just everything that you do is is what you're doing today. And everything that you're doing is a project that has to do with what you're doing today. You know, it's not sure. once and for all. There's no once and done. You know, I did, it's not like I got a job when I was 18 and I had it until I died. <laughs> so <laughs> you you're know? saying like, because I read this in a different book, not your book, but in a different book that says, hey, what? Because I like the, like I said, the old school process of the elements, the planets. And the, and so the, the guy in this book said, look, once you open up this doorway, right? Once you get past the neophyte and you open up this doorway to these uh I guess energies or whatever. You can't stop in the middle because if you do, you're going to get like stuck in between worlds almost. And I swear on everything, man, I I really feel like that's real. Like not, not in a twilight zone kind of way, but in a sense, you get stuck in limbo. Yeah. Like like, like if you don't finish it, it's just like, you can't go back because, and and part of this is just like you can't go back you know part of part of this is just with everything in life like if you ever if you if you leave your hometown and you try to go back to it 20 years later you're you're too big you don't fit in anymore (laughs) and the people who stayed they've lived a completely different life than you and you don't get along with them anymore and it's just it's not the same you know you can't go back and that's how it is with everything in life you can't you can never you can never cross the same waters twice Right. And I think a lot of the times we, we think we're going to do that. And it's, it's, it's just not, it's just no, not how it ends up working out so much. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's part of, part of it is, is just, you know, you, you get pushed away from, 
from the events of the moment. And it's, 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 you can't, you can't go back to what you were before you did magic because that yeah. isn't you anymore, you know, and that life, that time is gone. It's not like you can go back to when you were not doing magic. All those people are gone. Yeah, They've moved on right, to, yeah. you know, so it, it, part of it is you can't go back because you can't go back. But also once you start, once you start generating your life with these currents of energy that respond to these angels and these seals and stuff, once you start generating that, you know, everything, like, like you said, you forget to do it or you take it for granted or you think you're done and you, 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 you might, you might stagnate or something along the way, but Whenever you want to do something again, you're going to want to do it with magic because it's so fun. It feels so good. You know, it's so it's 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 like once you figure out how how you can do things with ritual and uh, combined with action and feeling and exercise and all those other things, you know, it, it's just it's so effective. You, you just you, you, you don't you don't want to do it any other way yeah, you know what anything I mean? else seems like a waste of time like you know, yeah it's, it's and, and also when when you take a break from something like if you start a magical project and you decide oh no i don't really want this anymore and then years go by and you come back to it later and you decide you're gonna get back into the occult stuff almost always people pick up right where they left off and it's like why why did they do that part of it is psychological you know they feel like they have to but also part of it is because they weren't done yet <laughs> You know, yeah. it's like you, you get called to this path because of fate. And if, if you're if it's your fate to do this, you're going to you're going to pick up right where you left off if you take a break. So might as well just do it, I think, is, is sort of the lesson I'm leaning towards these days. Sure, man. And uh, we're so we're going to take a break here. Uh, the, also, if you want to call in, you can. Uh, I'll open up the phone lines here in a minute. We're here with Rufus Opus. You guys go check out his website, too, at uh, Rufus Opus dot com. And uh, you can check out his uh, Planetary Magic Principles course, his books. Uh, there's some other courses on there, a Conjure class. It's a really cool website at rufusopus.com. Go check it out during the break. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're talking about magic. We're talking about his books, The Seven Spheres, which is a book that really influenced my life. I also want to talk about his other book, but I got a, I got a question to ask you, man. I got been on my mind and you might be the guy to give me advice his website's rufusopus.com matter of fact i'm pretty sure i know you'll be the right guy to uh <laughs> give me the advice on this so uh, so if you're like a uh practicing an occultist or man, just even a mystic or whatever but i would say especially if you're a magician let's say you you made a mistake like i did so i just stopped doing magic for a while or whatever and then dynamite happens just everything in your life goes to shit whether it's your your career your love life whatever and then you find yourself isolated alone again looking at this place like what the hell just happened right mm -hmm. what do you do? yeah so i i have i have had the good fortune the excellent good luck of in my life has been uh such that i get to rebuild my life every few years uh it's it's been um I, I i get into this this uh lifestyle where and this is something i have, I have done for years because I, I was undiagnosed and i wasn't in treatment and all this stuff but but like i've got a, i've got a mental illness that's sort of like right on the hairy edge of um of uh being in, incapacitated and every every once in a while i'll spin out when i get stressed out and if i don't take my meds and if i don't see my therapist regularly i i will destroy my life and that's well, what i do it's, it's something just, that's good right yeah basically <laughs> yeah it, it's it's just it's, it's just how it is but but um that's like the backdrop that I, I do magic against in my life. But the thing is, is, is magic has been there to, to help me out quite a bit. And it, it, it's really effective at rebuilding your life really quickly. And it's, it's like, um, in case, in case you ever wondered whether or not a cult uh, practices can make you sane. They they don't really help with the mental illness very much. However, mentally ill people can use magic really well. So it's like it's kind of like kind of a it's a not really great thing there. If you're crazy <laughs> and you start doing magic, you're just gonna make a lot of a lot of crazy things happen. <laughs> so that's always great. But um, but anyway, the, the magic doesn't need you to be mentally healthy or mature or whatever for it to work. It works regardless. So um. Even though I, I had some problems before I, I started getting my life together and getting things on track, uh, the magic is super effective. And I did I, I developed a system 
of rebuilding my life with magic because I was doing it so often. And it turns out that I, I refined this process. And, and I, uh, the last time I did it, um, my, uh, I, I was drinking, I had convinced myself I, the, the problem was, was, uh, well, whatever the problem alcohol, was, the, the, right? yeah, the solution was booze. <laughs> I didn't know what the problem was, but the solution was definitely going to be alcohol this time. Uh, but in my alcoholic stupor, I ruined my life, you know, and, uh, like, drunks do it's just it's what what we do but but when i sobered up i had to rebuild my life and it took me about two years to go from unemployed homeless not homeless like i i was in a house but i had to move out and get my own house because i was in a relationship for six years and the relationship was over and i didn't know it until i sobered up and then um <laughs> you sobered up and you're like wait <laughs> wait not together anymore? oh <laughs> oh <laughs> oh i see oh, oh i'm sorry i didn't i didn't know <laughs> but yeah it was it was a it was a pretty eye-opening like she had already figured out that i was an alcoholic years before i did so uh, but yeah so like i had to, i had to move i had to start over i had two kids they were like 18 you know 17 to 18 and or 18 and 19 and like i had to provide a, a place for them and and they were transitioning to college and it was during the pandemic and it was like brutal and and i'm unemployed and i can't find work and i was unemployed for like six months and it's never i'm never unemployed for more than a month sure like yeah. i haven't been unemployed for more than a month in years and i was it was like six months couldn't find a job running out of money everything is broke and i was like going through every bit of stress that you can imagine that sucks. so yeah. uh yeah starting starting from scratch i mean as soon as i started doing the magic everything started getting better so the first thing you do if, if you find yourself in a crap situation is you want to do a Saturn, right? A Saturn, right? Is, and by these rights, what I'm talking about is a very simple seven spheres, right? It's where you conjure the archangel and you read the Orphic hymn to the planet. Okay. If you've read the seven spheres, it's just that ritual. It's very simple. Um, I, I've got videos that show you how to do it on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's, you get a table of practice, you draw your table of practice, you get a llama of the spirit, you put this, the angel's, seal on it and in the right hour and the right day you, you go through and you conjure the spirit and you read the orphic hymn and it's just conjure the archangel read the orphic hymn sit for a minute ask for a little bit of help you don't, don't have to be very specific just a little bit just say please initiate me into your spheres let your energies flow and then bless me with the blessings that i need from you you know keep it generic at that point and, and and just start start with that and in saturn you want to ask it to stop all the pain that's happening in my life right now. Right. Cause Saturn is where everything stops. And if you, if you get, if you ever been damaged, like hurt, like in a, in a fist fight or something, like you're getting beat and getting beat with a fist and, and you're bleeding and you're getting beat. First thing you have to do is stop the fight. Right. <laughs> right. So Saturn is stopping things. Saturn stops that pain. So if you're in a situation where you're still getting beat up, even if it's subconsciously, Saturn will stop that and get you out of that. Next thing you do is you go to Jupiter. Jupiter is blessings and expansion. So uh, uh, the, the very next thing you do is you go to Jupiter on a Thursday and you ask for resources, right? Because you, you're rebuilding your life. You need stuff. You need all the, the stuff you can get. So you want resources, wealth, prosperity, um, all, all the resources you need to rebuild your, your life and the favor and goodwill of of people in authority. So in Jupiter, you get wealth and you get blessings from people in, in authority. So that's where you get your job. You get your uh, good luck with the cops. You get the judge to find in your favor as part of the divorce. You know, you don't get screwed by your, your ex leaving you completely <laughs> high and dry. You know, it's like, it's, it's damage control and it gets the, it gets the authorities on your side right away with the Jupiter, right? The Mars, right? You do that next. And that one is uh, to keep you from getting sucked into the drama of the situation. So every time you go through a, a major overhaul in your life, there's all this drama. Everybody's mad at you. You're mad at yourself. Your kids are mad at you. Your dog hates you. Everybody's pissed at you. And, and everywhere you go, there's a fight. <laughs> You know, and it's just right, like, yeah. it, it, it sucks, you know, and it's like, it's like it goes happen, that way. Though, like, so could you use that Mars, right? Like anytime you change, anytime you change something about yourself, people get pissed. I Absolutely. don't know why they, they're just like pissed off 
because you're because, changing, you know? Right. And be, well, nobody likes change, but if you're changing, it means that they might have to change. If you, if you succeed in changing, it means there's no excuse for them to not change. Right. So that's a threat. And then also if you, if you change and you're doing what they were doing, then if you stop doing it, then you're judging them. You know, oh, like, yeah, yeah. like for, for drinking, like I quit drinking and all my friends that still drank were like, I'm, I, they got super defensive. Like, like they had to explain to me why it was okay for them to drink still. I'm like, dude, you're not the one who's an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm the alcoholic. You, you, you don't have to defend yourself. I made him uncomfortable. About you to begin with, I'm telling you that I'm not drinking anymore. And it's like the mirror thing, right? Right. Well, I drink that, because that, of this and yeah. Okay, fine. You know? Yeah, whatever. It's it has nothing to do. So that's that. That was a big eye opener for me after I quit drinking. Was that nobody gives a crap about me? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, everybody yeah. really loves themselves. And I was so drunk all the time. I thought they that they really gave a shit about what I had to say. Bro, that's nobody something I, cares. I've, I've struggled with too. That I need to <clears throat> do some magic with myself because, like, even in like my relationships and love life or whatever, like. I get pissed off at that fact sometimes because I feel like I'm aware that everybody is a heart and soul in this thing, right? Mm -hmm. But somehow or another, I end up being just a character in your story. Right. You know, like I'm I'm not a character. I'm I'm an equal, right? Like I'm not a character in your story. Things that you do or don't do affect me, whether you like it or not. And I know that about you. So why can't you know that about me, right? And this is something that, I feel like I keep cycling with over and over again and I get angrier and more heartbroken mm-hmm. and more pissed off about it each time. And I'm like, when is this going to stop? Right. All right. So uh, what you, what you're describing is the same kind of frustrations I feel when I'm going through something where I have a lesson that I have to learn that I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to learn. Sure. All right. And sitting there, sitting here, listening to what you just said, it's super easy for me to say, brother <laughs> what you're going through right now is is you don't want to hear it but uh you know that i don't remember exactly where i was going with that but but like the the it, it's easy for me to to say you know i mean so you, what was it you're saying again you, you said you, being you a see character people, in other people's story yeah being a not, character in their not story being right? treated like i i was beat it was maybe because it was beaten into me to put other people first right mm-hmm. like that's like kind of like your childhood shut up you know don't be a problem mm-hmm. put other people first but right. then you run into other people that you 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 know it's like when they do stuff for things people i don't it's hard i don't even want to go there because i don't want to piss anybody right. off but like so, it's so not like, genuine man like i they're i'm just a character in their story you see what i'm right. saying that's it and, and and so what what you're going through with this character thing and, and being a character in their story and, and having a problem with being so like it bothers you and it makes you mad that, sure, that yeah. they're that they're like that. So that thing that where you get bothered and you're mad about things, that's you dealing with the problem in life. That's you're you're growing around this. This is something about life that you have to learn and you have to accept and you have to learn to deal with and and change something about yourself to adapt to the fact that these other idiots aren't going to change, you know, cause, cause this is one of the big ones that, that, that people don't care about other people. You know, the flip side of that is you, you want them to care more about you because you're feeling like you're not, you're, you're not getting the attention that you need, Sure, yeah. but, yeah. but you're given that you're giving that attention to them. Right. So the the imbalance there is that you're giving too much attention to other people that they're not giving to you. And you're mad that you're not getting that attention, but you're giving away your own attention. So the solution is to give your own attention back to yourself first, because you're not getting that from other people. Right. And then when you give yourself that attention that you're giving other people that you resent giving them in the first place, because they're not going to give it back. You know, you, you eliminate that thing that you, you eliminate getting rid of it and then being mad about not having it. Right. So you're not mad at yourself. You don't feel like it's, you no, screwed up. Like I'm, trusting and I'm not even mad at people. I, it's almost mm-hmm. like I'm mad at the, the, it's, it's just, like you're, a, you're just frustrated with, yeah, with that aspect thing. of life. Yeah. Cause you don't want to, you overgive sometimes. And mm-hmm. it, some people don't even know that you're overgiven because what they value is something totally different than what you value. And it's just like a never ending frustrating thing. Right. Right. You know? It's it's this lack of, of parity. There's no there's no equality between you and the and the person that you're working with. Right. Right. And that's just it. Is there's no there is no equality. So like I I really I'm a guest on your show tonight 
one one of hundreds of guests you're going to have, sure. you know, it, it, across the and your show is the important thing. The guests come and go, and even the host might come and go. The the show will go on, right? So it's like what it's a lot like a budget. You know, you have to figure out what you're going to spend and what you're going to get back on it. But until you start, so like your problem is, is that you don't give you, like, it's easy for me to say, you don't give yourself enough attention and you don't take care of yourself enough. Right. So like you, you, you are more concerned about other people and you see that you're not getting taken care of and you're mad about it. And, and as these are all valid feelings and it's normal, like what you, what you're doing is all healthy and you're experiencing these things. And it's great because it's actually it's a lesson you. in self nurturing, I think is what I've come to the thing. What I've come exactly. to learn. It's like, Oh, so that's exactly it. It's not about <clears throat> people just at first. It's like, dude, I feel like I'm just dealing with a bunch of emotional terrorists. Right. Mm -hmm. They're that unaware that they're emotional terrorists. Right. Like I don't. Right. But then it's like, wait, but if you yeah, were but, if you were fine with yourself and taken care of, you could deal with anything. Really? You you just have to be balanced in yourself. Like you could you would have clear boundaries and you would take mm -hmm. care of yourself. You wouldn't just. But you wouldn't even be in this position. So why are you blaming it on everybody else? Right. Right. So. You take care of yourself first. And then, and then you, you basically, you just, you, you need to be a little more selfish. Like somebody told yeah. you you're too selfish and you believe them. And that, that's where, you, that's why you're unhappy now. And that was, that's, that's it's how it's huge, raised, right? All Joseph right. cares about is Joseph. And I'm like, what, what are right. you talking uh, about, it, man? It, <laughs> like, <laughs> and you didn't. Uh, yeah. You actually just cared about, you know, you wanted to play baseball or whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not like, it's not like I'm being selfish here, mom. I just was playing a game. Yeah. It's not, I'm not trying to ruin your life. You, you probably shouldn't have had kids. <laughs> it's it's like, you know, and, and so all of our parents, like not all of our parents, but a lot of parents and speaking as a parent, there have been times where I, I have wished I could do something other than be a dad, you know, sure, like in that yeah. moment, oh, yeah. I didn't want to go to the, the Chuck E. Cheese and, and watch my kids play with all these other kids and I've have heard to deal it with their before. parents. Man, I want to travel. I want to adventure. And I want to do this like, but you got a yeah. seven year old or you've got a 10 year old. Yeah. Like you but, got, and, and take them the with you, you know? Yeah. They're great. And, and if you want to be a good parent, you can be a great parent and have a great time with your kids. There's no reason oh, yeah, that you can, man. you know, kids. but but people who do, who don't feel like doing it, you know, or, you know, at some point you're going to wish you didn't have that kid. And if you let that kid know that, then you're a bad parent. You right. know? That's what I told my dad. I said, you know, this whole Joseph cares about Joseph thing. Like, are you, I was an accident. I realized I was an accident, right? You don't have yep. to keep reminding me, right? Right. That I was yeah, my accident. parents, my parents told me I was an unexpected surprise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is a thing that, that has been mirrored to me. So all of my life, like people come into my life that have, they like, they don't believe that they're lovable enough. Right. Right. So they're, they're putting themselves out for other people in ways that I'm like, why are you doing that? And then mm -hmm. all of my studies in the occult have shown me that the reason why these mirrors, which is what relationships are coming into my life is because I've, I've been doing that. Right. Right. So I'm talking yeah. to myself when I talk to my friend or my girlfriend exactly. or whatever. Like I'm talking to myself every single time. So then it's mm -hmm. like, oh, but I don't want to be alone. But you're talking you. to yourself anyways. You know what I mean? Like you really. Yeah, you've, you've engineered a life where, where like everybody in it is just going to be you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. You're talking to yourself anyway. So you're, you're like, hey, why don't you give me more attention? Or why don't you put us first? Or why don't, and then you're cursing that, then why don't you put yourself first? You know, so that you can put this. Mm -hmm. And it's like after it's all settled done and, you know, you got these angels talking. He's like, well, you're not putting yourself first. Right. Right. This is why yeah. this is a mirror in your world. And you're like, son of a bitch, I can't blame anybody for anything. You so know? The, the the ultimate secret of all this occult stuff is that is that, you know, I, I'm just going to say it. Thou art God, right? Right. Yeah. There, I am, there, I am there, man. Yeah. There, there is no God but man. Every Every man and every woman is a star. You know, you can say it a million different ways. So the, the point of the great work is to regain unification with the Godhead. You know, it's it's re reunifying with our, our divine source, letting that divine spark be aware of its divine nature. You know, like there's different ways of saying it. But at the end of the day, we really are 
manifestations of God. Yeah. And and that one eternal unity that is everything at once that doesn't know that it's everything at once, that's us, you know. And when you start treating yourself like you're God, like you're not you're gonna the God, yeah, you're not gonna you're gonna take care of yourself, man. You're and everybody let, else. And everybody else, and you're not gonna let people be a certain way to you. And you don't have to be an asshole about it either, right? Like right. you just don't right. Because because you're you because you're the one that's creating your life and what kind of life do you want to live? Do you want to live like an asshole? You can live like an asshole. It's free. You can be an asshole for free. Yeah, it is free. It's, it's easy <laughs> it's, too. Or right? you can be a kind person for free. Yeah. You know, we were talking about Lamborghinis earlier. You can buy you can buy a Lamborghini if you want to do that. You can go out and live that life that gets you a Lamborghini, but you have to live the life that gets you a Lamborghini. You know, you have to live the, the style, money, no the lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's, and you know, Lamborghinis break down a lot. <laughs> they're, they're a pain in the ass. They're a bad car. <laughs> it's like, do you really want that? It's not, it's not worth it. But, but this whole this whole thing is that we're, we're the gods, you know, we're the gods and we get to do whatever we want, you know? And when you start acting like, like you're a God, you know, and not like in an arrogant, egotistical way because their ego isn't god it's not it's not the josh or rufus or whatever that's not god it's just the thing that is god manifested as rufus sure yeah you know? and everybody else around you too yeah, so, right yeah right but but me specifically so that i could have my life like this this whole thing i'm experiencing god did that for me i did that for myself so that i could experience it as myself I told right. people this all the time. I said, man, do you know what? Like, I know this is hard to believe, but what if the greatest thing the creator ever did for you was the whole idea of this whole thing is like Rocky, right? And it's not really like Rocky, but in a sense, this consciousness thing that created us kind of gets off in the highest sense of the word when you come into your greatest glory as an individual, it's just like, yes. bravo, you know what I mean? And that's right. why we fall in love with all these movies and stuff. When people stand up and, you know, he did it or whatever, is because I think God's wanting to experience that through everybody right. in some we, kind of it, way. It, you know? It's like watching your kids succeed. Right. You know, yeah. it's like watching, it's like watching your kid, that, like my kids, uh, they just look like they just got laid off. They were working at this pottery factory and they ended up, you know, brothers, they work in the same place. Why, why? I don't know. But they, they, one of them got laid off and, and like hit the ground running, you know, and the other one is just like right on top of his, his crap and, and he's hitting the ground running too. You know, like I'm watching these kids go through a really stressful situation and they're, they are thriving. They are nailing it. You know, yeah. they, they've got, they're on top of stuff. And I feel like I did all right, you know, and, and not like, not like, I'm not like proud of myself. Like I did a great job as a dad. What that's awesome. I'm relieved, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm like, that's, that's a big stressor as a dad is, is are your yeah. kids going to make it, yeah. you know, or, or are you screwing them up, you know, and I'm watching them succeed and I'm like, Oh my God, that's such a relief. And I feel like, you know, that's, that's gotta be like part of how it is for, for this God thing, you know, but I think, I think for God, I think what the, the thing that we call God is, is in us. Like sure, and is yeah. part of us and is that curious spark that's completely ignorant, you know, like, like in that moment when you did that ritual and the moonbeam came down and the, the sky opened up and you saw that, you know, you got, you had that illuminated piece of land and you were, you were at one with those lunar spirits, right? Yeah, it was awesome, dude. It really was. It was amazing. But you weren't thinking open up clouds, no, <laughs> shine no, light it, here. It, it's, it surprised me. I actually didn't yeah. even expect it because I'd been doing that book like every day for some i just got hooked on it i still got my tables mm -hmm. man from years ago when i made it yeah. right so like i've been doing that book forever and then it just happened and i was like oh you know it, and i never felt like you said like oh joe's doing this so look i am god and da -da -da. i never you still got yours too that's cool yeah i, I got never, mine right here <laughs> i so. never felt like that i just felt like it was like a thank you right like, just thank you for at least saying hi mm -hmm. and validating this. Yeah. You know? Or like, that's neat, you right. know, yeah. or, or, or like just, Oh, cool. You know? And that's it. That's just like, wow, it, yeah. that that's enough in that moment where you just appreciate it. And you're just like, Oh, that's it, it, like, I don't feel powerful. I feel, um, lucky, 
You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, like thrilled to get to enjoy it. You know, how much, uh, how much of, do you, of this do you think self love? The thing that bothers me the most is, and this is probably another reflection. Okay. But the thing that bothers me the most is people that don't feel like that they're worthy of love in the highest. Okay. Right. I mean, I, I don't, Absolutely. I mean, family, romantically, everything. They just, like, as soon as a good thing starts happening, that, boom, it, it can't mm-hmm. be real. Let's blow it up or whatever. And it's right. like, but we're here to make heaven, right? Like, so I feel, so like, yeah, I feel like, be. I feel like how much of that affects our magic, right? Like, if we had more self love, would it work more? Do you think, or would it be any different? I don't know. I, I, I so I, I really do think it has to do with emotions, like how emotionally a- attached to your desire you are, and how how controlled over those emotions you are. With not like you got to be able to feel them, but not like get lost in them and f- ride that. You know, it's like I, I mean, it, it's like edging. You know, <laughs> I mean, basically, yeah. it's like riding the edge in between. Be, before before reaching that moment of climax and actually ha- after reaching that moment of climax you know you're you gotta you gotta ride that wave in between the two states right and and that's that's like maintaining that that point where your your emotions are high but not released you know that that's an art form and when you when you get good at that then you can you get better at magic and and so i do think that your emotions have something to do with that but like I know people who think that they are just the bee's knees and they're complete assholes and they ruin everything they touch, you know, and they're very yeah, happy too. with themselves they're, the whole time. They're extreme. No, so, you're talking about narcissists, right? Like people, yeah, people yeah. that think they know everything and they everybody truly is just a character in their story and they don't mind right. smashing people up because they're, they're the shit, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. you're a dude. I get, I have, okay. I'm going to tell you this, right? So I've got Mars and Libra in the 12th, right? Okay. I have a like when people like that get justice, I get mm-hmm. happy. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? I like, I, like if they fell off a truck and hit their head, I'd be like, hmm, damn. Yep, about time. <laughs> yeah, dude, like <laughs> I, I don't. It's like that's. I I was thinking about what is the hell that what's the dark side of me, and it's me that like when people that hurt other people. I'm not talking about someone hits you, you hit them back in defense. Someone calls you an asshole, you call them an asshole in the defense. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking right. about people that just man, manipulate and emotionally screw with people and just don't have any you know, narcissist dude, yeah. right? Like mm-hmm. there's almost a side of me that's like I wish you really wasn't breathing. You're you're, you're just here <laughs> right. and then, and then if something happens to him, you're just like you had it coming. Yeah. Yeah, you but know, I don't like, like, like that I, karma I on me, right? Like, so I'm trying to figure out. It, I, I guess I'm asking you for your advice because I'm trying to figure out this twelfth house thing. Like, is it is that a balance too? Right? Like, do we? There has to be a positive side to that. Like, well, it's like the tree, right? Mercy and severity. There has to be yeah. a time for that. Yeah, I think I think that what you just said is 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 exactly what it is. It's there's a time for it. So like everything, everything that can happen on a, the, on the, uh, in the Zodiac, right? So like you've got 12 houses and seven planets or however many planets, whatever it, it, the planets go around through the houses and it impacts things. Anything that you can have on that chart, you can have in the real, in the real world. Right. So like your 12th house with the Libra and, and Mars and that, that's something that's for sure. It's a part of life. It's possible it's a potential reality. And so because of that, it's very much part of reality. You know, if it can happen, it, it is going to happen. And it's part of what we experience. And of course, that there's a place for it. And that that existence of, of, of that room for everything, like like you have to come to terms with every part of your every part of, of me, every part of me that I don't like. I have to accept that that's just part of, of, yeah. of what it is. I don't have to like it. I don't have to express it. You know, I can choose not to do it. I can do the work to overcome it. I can, I can go to therapy and, and get out of my anger patterns right. or whatever. You know, I can do that. I can do whatever I want to with it, you know, but that, 
I have to accept it first. You know, like I have to accept that that is inside of me. I have a mental illness for real. I, I'm an alcoholic. You know, sure, I have yeah. to, I, I have to buy that shit and own it. I, it's not, it's not something that I can just pretend isn't real. I wish I could. I really do. I would love to just be like, oh, no, man. Like, like really, it's just, it was the people in my life that were making me drink. No, <laughs> no, yeah. no, it wasn't. It's, it was, I, I have a chemical thing. And when I drink, it just, it gets bad and I make poor choices. Other people, whatever. I can't hate myself. <laughs> I, I can't go through life hating myself. I think I, I need to have a good time. <laughs> I really do. I need to enjoy things. So I have to accept the fact that I can't drink and that that sucks. You know, I have to accept that there are things about me that suck. And the more I look at reality, the more, the more crap there is out there that, that sucks. Like there, like I, I, I don't, I don't want to make you uncomfortable or the audience uncomfortable, but I, I, I was molested as a child, right? It's it not going to make me uh, uncomfortable. I understand uh, <laughs> Yeah, I dealt with it. I've been in therapy about it. I don't care. It's it's a, it's just it's an evil thing that happens in life, right? And it happened to me and I had to deal with it and it sucks. But that's just it's just part of life. You know, there's monstrous crap in this real life that we live in. Horrible things happen to people, to children. Horrible things happen to children that should not happen to them. Now, I have a burning change- sensation in my chest right now that wishes that whoever that was would just die. And I almost, well, yeah. I almost feel like I would kill them. Like, well, that's, that's right, a, so, I can't, that's the part of but, me I'm trying to deal with. Like, what But there's some about. part, so there's people that kill people like that, yeah. right? That's part of life. You know, like there's people that do that. And then there's people that kill those kind of people. I'm not either one of those people. I right. don't, I don't molest people and I don't murder people. You know, <laughs> right, I understand. Sure, I, it, I, it, it. I, I yeah. get why a murderer would want to murder someone who molested someone. I understand that. And I agree. I, I agree that that makes sense, you know, but it's I've not. I've never murdered anybody in my life, but I have an itch but, to want to, like, <laughs> just like, I don't, just swing a sword on those people, dude. Uh, you know I, what I, I mean? want, uh, Yeah, I want to see I want to see damage done to people who cause damage, but I don't want to be a causer of damage, you know. And it's There's like, a I don't want to that, too, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, well, it's also just I have to live with myself later, you know, and and. The monsters. So in in the Greek mythology, like I've studied a lot of Greek mythology the last couple of years and Gaia created monsters. And when when Kronos or uh, uh, Uranus and and Kronos both got overthrown because they wouldn't let Gaia's monsters live. Right. They so like Uranus kept Gaia from giving birth and. Um, wouldn't let the monsters out. And then uh, Kronos put the monsters in hell. And so Gaia and Rhea con- conspired with Zeus to overthrow Kronos. Right. So, so these monsters exist. And, and if, if the world doesn't let these ugly parts manifest, then the world overthrows whoever's in charge. Right. So, so Kronos didn't want the monsters out. Uranus didn't want the monsters out. Gaia said, screw you. We're, we're th- these monsters are part of life. So that's that that mythology teaches us that the horrors of existence are something that have to be let out. And if you try to stop it, you will be deposed. Right. right? As as the king of your life, as this manifestation of a spark of the divine, as the God that determines what your experiences are going to be, you have to know that you have to allow negative crap to exist. You have to accept that there are parts of you that are wrong that are bad, that are capable of causing harm. And I just did a not- show on this Monday night, and, and <laughs> I, I was just explaining exactly what you were saying, dude. And people were like, well, I don't know what you're going through. And I love the fact that they have sympathy, but I wasn't, I'm not going through anything. I'm, I'm telling you I'm coming to terms with the demons that I know that are inside of me, right? Like, exactly. I'm not yeah. going to use them unless I have to. Right. Like that's, right. that's the thing. <laughs> it's it's accepting thing. that these monsters are a part of yourself and that you could be this evil bastard. Oh, right. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's the thing is you could be a lot worse than everybody who's causing you harm. And you know it, you mm-hmm. know, you could, you, you don't yeah. want to, it's not, it's not what you, you don't want to live that life. You don't want a Lamborghini and you don't want to go to jail. <laughs> you know, it's like somewhere in between, there's gotta be some, something good, you know? And I'm but, not even like, a spiteful person either. Like if somebody does me, hurts me, I'm not like, well, I'm going to hurt you back. Like mm-mm. I don't, I'm not that 
Like it's no, something you different, dude. It's hard to explain, right. man. You know, but but by recognizing that you could be that, that you could do that, you empower yourself, right? So you actually have the power to become a mafia guy, a, a wise guy, a, an avenger of of innocents who've been harmed. You could do those things. You have it in you, and and recognizing that gives you the power to become something with those forces. The reason the reason I, I drive people, I like I, I trick people, I slip it into their their psyches. I I'm always trying to get people to do the seven spheres, the initiations, to be empowered, to give them the powers to 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 create their lives. You know, because you do these initiations and it makes you more powerful, <laughs> you know, and you can actually do what you want with all this stuff and recognizing that your power includes the power to be evil, right? It, it puts you ahead of it. You know, if you, yeah. if you want to pretend like you're not capable of those things, then they can slip out and get you, you know, if you or recognize you just it, walked all over, maybe yeah. some of those demons were put there to protect you in a sense, right? Right. Like, right. You know, and, and when, when, when you actually get your Mars stuff straight, you know, you don't put up with crap anymore. You actually tell people, no, that's going to cause me pain. And so I'm not going to do that. And it's not, it's not in a way that's offensive to them. It's just, it's just stating a, a boundary. It's it's like, it's really just observing that, that, that no, we're not going to do that. Sure. You know, it, it, it's like, you know, and so even down to things like an argument with my wife, like when I'm on and I'm doing things the right way and I'm, I'm like not screwing things up. If I get into a point where I'm, I want to fight with my wife and I know, I know when I want to fight, you know, I know when I'm in a mood, um, like I can just not do that. Like right. I, yeah, I you choose not yep. right in that moment. Right. But I don't know. I want to get back to the, the whole idea of power. Right. So like sure. we have the power to be evil and and to be whatever we want, you know, and the seven spheres initiations are about empowering you to be whatever you want to be. But you can't you can't be good if you're afraid, if, if you deny that you can be evil. You know, if you if you if you deny that you could do the evil things, then you're you're limiting yourself to only those good things. And basically, you're not really limited you know, and, and then if you accidentally hurt someone, you're like, how could I possibly hurt someone? I, your, your self image is blown. But if you know that you're a dangerous motherfucker, yeah. that's going to cause some damage. If you get upset, you know, then you're going to be careful not to get upset because you recognize your potential for evil and your potential for damage. And that gives you power over it, you know, but by denying that and saying, Oh, I can never do that. No, you could do that, but you choose not to. That's why you're a powerful person. You know, it it, it puts the it, it takes you from being a passive uh, person who relies on on their nature and their instinct to take care of them to an active person who recognizes their weakness and has taken steps to uh, to strengthen themselves in, in response to that. That's you know? awesome, so I, man. Yeah, that's probably what Mars and Libra in the 12th is all about. Right. Like, yeah. cause you have to, you don't, you you go through a lot of pain and crazy stuff, but you, those, those, what you just said makes you stronger, mm -hmm. right? Like it makes you a better warrior, not, not right. a bigger victim, a better warrior. Right. right? It yeah, puts you, it, yeah it, it makes you aware of it, but it also, so like, I, I'm not really familiar with Mars and Libra in the, in the 12th house. I don't know exactly what that means, but it sounds like it, it sounds like he gets screwed over a lot. Yeah. Right. Is that yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so well, like, it's like 12th house is garbage, right? It's where it's like the dumpster right. house, but it's a, right? it's a transformational thing. Like I get a lot of, um, injustice in, things that just, it's going to sound like I'm whining, but just things that just are just messed up, man. You know how many it's times I've fair. heard in my life, right. Where people are like, <laughs> I can't believe they did that to you. That's messed yeah. up. Yeah. Or this is like, why? You know? So one of my sons is a Pisces. Poor kid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he can't help it. There's nothing he can do about it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's but hard. he's got a Pisces life and I, I feel sorry for him, but he doesn't. He's happy being a Pisces. Pisces like that shit, I guess, whatever. But, you know, I, I look at the things that he has to deal with and it's just like, oh, but, but yeah, you, you're, you, you gotta, what, when when you get crapped on by life because of your your chart is 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 configured so that you're more likely to get crapped on by life you go through these processes and you learn how to deal with it 
because you've been through it so many times. And then when it comes time to help other people, you can help other people because you are the pro, right? So like I, with my issues, I, I've learned how to rebuild my life from scratch. And it's basically, you go down, down through the seven spheres from Saturn to the moon and you rebuild it in every sphere. You say, stop the pain, give me strength, give, give me blessings, give me strength, give me the ability. Oh, oh, before we could go too far, much further, I didn't finish the process of rebuilding. Yeah, you're right. Mars, protect me from right. the drama of the situation. All right. So let's go on to the sun real quick because the sun is key to everything. Okay. Right. So in the sun, you do the, the conjuration of the archangel and you do the, the Orphic hymn and then you actually ask it to, uh, what's the word? It, it transform. Um, it, you're, you're basically, you're asking for the heat of the sun to completely melt you and dissolve you down to your core components and let all the negative crap that, that, that that you that let you get to the point where everything fell apart, let all of that negative crap get burned away and dissolved. And then when you recoagulate, when you reform, only the pure and noble parts of yourself are going to reform. So like I, I got married to this woman, she got pregnant and had babies to keep me, even though I wanted to get a divorce and I stayed married to her and I raised the children for years, even though we were all miserable. And finally I had to get a divorce because I was going to go to jail for violence if i didn't get a divorce so finally i got a divorce and then all of a sudden my life got better and i was a better parent too you're like i know i should have left a long time ago but yeah and and we have these stories right everybody has these stories of of how i screwed up and i went through this and i did this and now i know better you know but but uh, I, don't, I don't know. The, the whole thing is, is you can leave at any time and you don't have to make yourself suffer, you know, but, but the, the solar rights then, you know, you, you build up all this crap in your toxic relationships that you go through for like, I was in it for 11 years. I was with this woman. And by the end of the 11 years, I was an evil bastard. I was ready to go to jail because I was, I had corrupted myself by, by making compromises with this person that I didn't want to be with. I made all these compromises because I thought that I should, you know, and I, I was ruining the everybody's right thing, life. Being the good guy. Yeah. Right? Obligations. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. So I let my obligations dictate my life. The thing is, is I wasn't obliged. I could have been a dick the whole time. I could have been like, you know what? No, I am not going to raise these kids under this roof. I'm going to take care of myself first and then I'm going to provide for them out of, out of the money I have left over. Cause that's what I have to do if I'm actually going to be there for them. And if I would have done that, it would have been a different life, you know? Yeah, but bro. anyway, this, the sun is, is key to rebuilding everything. It gets rid of all that crap that we get built up in our life. It burns it up. So you ask, you ask Michael, the archangel of the sun to consume all the negativity and to reform you around your good qualities and your noble traits. So when you do that, it hurts. It, it, it it hurts. You have to face the truth about yourself. The sun is the realm of truth. Um, you have to accept all the, you have to accept all this terrible truth about yourself and it's never fun. It's never pleasant. The sun hurts. It's birdie. It's hot, whatever, but it's purifying and it's cleansing. And as the pain leaves, what you're left with is this pure gold, right? And you've got this solid fucking foundation of, of greatness, of righteousness, of, of glory that you can express into the world. And you can just tap into that. So the sun is the key to all that stuff. And then after you've got the sun, like, like Saturn, Mars, um, and the sun are, are the key things to rebuilding everything, right? So Saturn is foundation and framework and it's stopping the pain. Mars is protecting you from all the social crap that gets you back involved with it. Again, the sun is for healing everything. Jupiter, of course, for all the blessings and the healing and, and, and whatnot. But then once you got to the sun, you can work on your, your love life and Venus. You can work on getting your brain back together. If you're an alcoholic like me, you can do that in Mercury. Mercury rebuilds brain cells. Um, you can go to the moon to, to sort of get your, your glitz and glamour back in life, you know, to get, to get your image, your, your image restored, your reputation fixed, um, to work on, on the, the, the subtle things that you don't really think about the emotional sides of things in life, you know, all the lunar aspects of things that aren't necessarily said, but, but influence things. So like, after you've done the sun, you can you can deal with all the rest of the stuff through the other planets. But you That's want to so do cool. all seven planets to rebuild your life, and you want it to go top down. And if you're if you're in a negative place, start bottom up, and and on your way up through the spheres every other day. Start on a Monday, start on a Monday, and go moon, 
and then on Wednesday do Mercury, and then on Friday do Venus, and you're working your way up through the ch- the tree every other day. And then all you're asking for on your way up is just release me from all the negativity of the moon. Release me from all the negativity of Venus. Release me from all the negativity. So as you go up the tree, you're releasing the bad energy, right? Right. Okay. And then as when when you get to Saturn, then you say, "Stop the pain. Stop the misery. Expand my foundation. Set my set my 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 uh, framework so that I can rebuild my life." You know. And then Jupiter, bless my life. Heal me. Let all this. Let all the the blessings that are, all the resources that will that will restore my life come into being in me. You know. And Mars, protect my resources. Guard guide me and guard me and help me be disciplined and then the sun heal me and convert me and turn all the, the negative things into gold and then venus find me my partner and my my social situation and my friendships and my relationships that i need and and mercury give me my mind back let me plan my things let me integrate all the the pieces that have to tick and tie together and then in the moon it's it's let it all form together and manifest and and come into being and, and materialize and wax wax into being and when wane into being when it needs to so anyway, that's cool yeah man. That, that, that that's the way to do it it's all seven spheres and that's how the universe was created that's what the emerald tablet teaches is is that we rise through the spheres and we return in power and that's how the universe is created it's it's just it's true hermetics and just so, for anybody that wants to know about the Oh, oh! I got that in the twelfth or whatever. Like you're that. I'm just talking about the energies we're born with that we're here to learn lessons from and overcome. It doesn't mean you're right. stuck with that. But the cool thing is, is like Rufus is saying, even if you are stuck with it, magic helps, right? Right. So yeah, you know, like why would you not do it? I don't understand. But that's a whole other thing, man. I can't believe we already ran through the show, man. We didn't even talk about your other book, you know. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I'm always available. So I yeah, mean, dude, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to get the things to work on, but when it works, we can talk. <laughs> yeah, man. We'll, we'll, I would love to talk about your other book. I'm, I'm glad to hear. I can tell, dude, you're doing your, your energy's higher vibratory than it, it was last time, but it's even higher vibratory than it was then, dude. So things are going great. All right. Yeah. So like all the stuff that I talk about with the magic, it really does make you a stronger, better, smarter, richer, healthier person. And I'm all those things compared to what I used to be. I'm not great. I'm not like the yeah, perfect sure. person by sure. any means, but compared to where I used to be, I am on top of the world. And I, I feel like in five years, I'm going to be even better. So that's why I, I hope everybody does this stuff. Cause it sure seems to work for me. <laughs> right on. Well, you guys go check out the books, all the classes, rufusopus.com. Get the book, man, at least at the very least, get the planetary magic book at the seven yeah. spheres. Seven and spheres it, is great. It's a, like, it's I, a I, badass book. I, I'm really so, I, I like, I, I feel like I'm lucky to have been a part of it. You know, like I, I, I know I wrote it, but I don't, I don't really take a lot of credit for it because it's all trithemius, you know, it's just, I, I recorded it and I put some words around it, but, but it is super effective. And I, I like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not selling it to make money for me. I'm, I'm getting it out there because I think it's super effective for no, everybody. Dude, I think you, you know? added a little bit more magic to the <laughs> magic, right? Cause to me, well, the masculine I put a story around it coming together is the, is the ultimate magical power. And the way you've yeah. done it is I want you to put your masculine and feminine energy into this as an individual, right? On top of the sprinkles. And I'm like, mm-hmm. damn, that's why it's probably working good. You know, I don't know. It's not, it's a know. badass book. I don't know why it works to be honest, but it does. It, everybody seems to have a, a decent time of it. Yeah. You know, like, like, like I've talked to people who like, I've been doing this long enough to now to where like this guy is in college and and he he had just graduated from college and he had done the seven spheres back in high school and um he, and he had basically he'd gone through school gotten everything he wanted and 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 he was ready to to go out and and make his fortune and and stuff and he just and he's like I'm going to have Rufus do a reading for me you know <laughs> so he's like and it, so he asks he asks he says what do I do what what should I do 
I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, and he's like, but I don't, he's like, I, I, I had a plan. I, I had everything I needed and I, I got what I wanted and I, it all worked and it, and it worked out great. Now I graduated, I've got a degree and I, I, I'm ready to go forward. How do I find out what my next steps are? And I'm like, dude, I don't know, <laughs> you know, but like, that's, that's the biggest problem people have when they, when they do the seven spheres work is that they don't know what they want to do with their lives. They can do whatever they want and they know they can do whatever they want. Cause like, it seems like like things go their way, you know, like if it, it, it's not, it's not like everybody's a millionaire, but like, nobody's like, but actually that's not true. There's a couple of people that are living on the streets who do seven spheres magic all the time, but they, they like it. They like living on the streets. They've got a nice van. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, as far as street people go, they're, they're living pretty well, right. you know, it, it's, it, it, it's intentional, you know, so no matter where you end up with this kind of thing, people who do this magic and, and do the initiations, they end up with the life that they that they are that they want to live and because they're empowered to do that. And the downside of that is when you're having a, a bad time of things, it's because you're you're doing it. You're, you're the one that's like, uh, you know, you've either missed something or. Or like, like you said, you forgot to do the magic or you, you, you just get sidetracked. You get distracted magic by the, the work the, or both. Right. Like which yeah. one did I not do? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, I don't know. The whole thing is hard. Like life is hard. And that that's the other part of why I say life is hard because life is fucking hard and it's a grind. It's a, it, you gotta, you gotta push up the hill every day. You know, like my, my motto, my, my symbol is, is Sisyphus. You know, you gotta climb the, the hill right. and you gotta push the rock up every morning. You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, listen, we'll do this again for sure. Definitely. I, I love what you're doing. I relate to what you're doing. I relate a vibe with just your energy, bro. Like I, I can tell it's legit. It's real. It's genuine. It's authentic. You're human. Well, you are too, and you're man. a magician. So that's the cool part. Right. And, <laughs> and you know, the way you explain the rituals and magic, like if people that didn't know anything about the occult, like people that are scared of it, right. If they hurt, if they ever get the chance and I hope some of them are listening tonight, the, hearing you talk about, how these processes work they like oh you know that's what magic is i thought it was yeah you know like it's yeah, that's not what, that, what that's, some people think it is you know that, that's why i did the youtube channel you know it, it, it i really just want people to see how easy it is right it, anyway I, I can't wait to come back on again i yeah, really brother. enjoy your show dude we'll do it again so. and for sure you guys go check out his website rufus opus.com the links will be in the show notes and uh yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow night. Uh, I believe Miss Aida is going to be on. We're going to be talking about root work, magic, and a little bit more. Good night, y'all. Sweet dreams. <laughs>